Hi, this is Dr. Dane. I wanted to do something a little different this week with Baptist History, and instead of doing a strictly audio cast, I wanted to put together a little video cast for you, improving on my uses of technology. Today I wanted to be able to, to this week, and since we talked about this this week in our lesson, I wanted to be sure that you understood the differences between the society approach for missions and the convention approach for missions. And we, you see this in your notes and you'll read about this in the textbook. The Society Approach for Missions is an organization of individuals. These are like-minded individuals who come together for a common goal, uh, such as foreign missions, and they're interested in it, and they come together to form a society uh, to uh, promote this opportunity to be involved in this. This is a very common way of doing things among uh, Americans in the 19th century, and it's uh, uh, continued even to this day among certain uh, ideas. Uh, membership of a society is based on financial contributions of the member of the society. You pay your dues, you get to be a member of the society. Um, and then the society approach is a single focus cause. That is, they have one single focus in mind and what they want to do for uh, their cause. In this case, it might be foreign missions, but they only do foreign missions. Now, the convention approach, though, is a little bit different because the convention approach relies much more heavily on the churches. The churches are the ones who send individuals to be a part of this. In this case, it's much more like a broader Baptist association that we've already seen as churches get together to cooperate together in this mission endeavor. The, uh, in the case of a convention, a central body collects and coordinates the resources. That is, that the money all comes into one pot, and then somebody else makes a decision about where the money's going to go. It also has a multiple focus and multiple causes. And the convention approach can do missions, education, uh, publications, uh, all different kinds of things under one uh, broad understanding, one broad umbrella. And usually the convention approach is limited to a geographical area. So in the beginning of the 19th century, we see a number of states like North Carolina, South Carolina, and New, and New York and other places that were forming state conventions of Baptists as the Baptists and the state got together uh, to form the bigger part uh, of this state organization. Now the convention approach usually I describe is sort of an umbrella. It's, uh, uh, if you can imagine an umbrella, all these things fit underneath it. Omissions, foreign missions, education, publication, all under this broader umbrella organization. So hopefully that will help you understand. Now among Baptists in the North, uh, the original formation of the Triangle Convention was in the method of a society. They were organized for foreign missions. Later on, they added some other things like home missions and publication and education. But eventually, they're going to revert back to the single focus society method because they were afraid that this was going to uh, impinge on the authority in the, uh, of the local congregation. Baptists in the South, though, are much more uh, familiar with the convention, convention approach, and they just continued right on with this convention approach. And uh, so the Southern Baptist Convention then uh, looks very much like this. Uh, that came out of the uh, original formation of the Triangle Convention. Uh, a couple of other things that I'd like to talk to you about today, or one in particular is this idea about uh, the original missionaries who went out, uh, Ann and Adoniram Judson and uh, uh, Luther Rice, who began as Congregationalists in North America and then went on to India and Burma as missionaries. Uh, you'll see this in the notes under Baptist Organized for Missions. Uh, af out of this uh, initial context, at Williams College, there were a number of students who met together, including Samuel Mills, who became a very important Congregationalist leader later on in America. And they organized this uh, original group that met together at uh, Andover Seminary called the Brethren. And they met together for prayer, and out of this then came this desire to do foreign missions. And that's where at Andover, uh, Adnar and Judson joined the group, and they became interested in doing foreign missions and going overseas to do foreign missions and going and going there initially to meet William Carey. Now the interesting story is is that as they uh, now uh, and Luther Rice joins them, he had been at Williams College and also ended up, ended up at Andover and becomes involved in this group that's going to go to India, which is where all the work's going on with William Carey. We've already read about Carey. So uh, Judson and his wife then determined to go to India. They're on board the ship. They're on their way to uh, meet William Carey and um, Adoniram is studying this New Testament scriptures and he's going to determine that when they get there they're going to be able to defend their position on pedo-baptism against, over against William Carey who's a Baptist. And so as they go through this trip then 
Uh, they find out, unfortunately for them, uh, and for the Congregationalist Mission Board, that they determined they were really Baptists because they now have a conversion experience away from being uh, pedo-Baptists to being b uh, baptizers en route to India on the ship. Uh, Adoniram's uh, wife, Anne, writes a little bit about this, and uh, you'll see this in the textbook, or at least this book called A Source Book for Baptist Heritage. This is uh, Leon Macbeth's book that goes along with his big blue book on Baptist heritage. Let me read just a short section here for you that uh, Anne, Anne Judson had written uh, while they were on their way uh, to India. Letter, she's writing a letter to her friend Nancy uh, back in the States. Uh, Can you, my dear Nancy, still love me? still desire from, to hear from me when, you, when I tell you that I have become a Baptist. <laughs> oh my goodness, what a deal. Uh, she describes for this an examination of the subject of baptism commenced on board the ship, the caravan. Mr. Judson was continuing the translation of the New Testament, which he began in America. He had many doubts respecting the meaning of the word baptize. This with the idea of meeting the Baptist in Serampore, he would uh, wish to defend his own sentiments, including a more thorough examination of the foundation of the pedo-baptist system. The more he examined, the more his doubts increased. And unwilling as he was to admit it, he was afraid the Baptists were right and he wrong. After we arrived in Calcutta, his attention was turned from this subject to the concerns of mission and difficulties of the government. But his mind was still uneasy, and he again renewed the subject. I felt afraid he would become a Baptist and fre frequently urged the unhappy consequences if he should. But he said his duty compelled him to satisfy his mind and embrace those sentiments which appeared most concordant with Scripture. My goodness, my dear Nancy, uh, she had become a Baptist. And now Luther Rice is another important individual, we mentioned him just a minute ago, who joined the group uh, on a different ship. And, uh, and interestingly enough, uh, Luther Rice came to the same sentiment that Adoniram Judson did on a totally different ship on his way to India that baptized meant to plunge underwater. And so they then determined they were no longer Congregationalists, but they were now Baptists. So Luther Rice then, because of ill health, returned to the United States where he worked across the country, back and forth, around and around, raising money and support for missions. And it's he who was able to put together this original Triennial Convention as Baptist leaders all across the, the North and Philadelphia and other places came together to be interested in missions. Now, I found this poster, uh, this painting, quite a long time ago. Hopefully you can see this. Now, this is a painting. This is not really a picture of Luther Rice. But what we have here is an artist rendition uh, made in the 1960s as the Sunday School Board made a number of posters to uh, demonstrate important scenes in Baptist history. Here you, see at, uh, here you see Luther Rice describing to these early Baptist leaders in America why it's important to go to Burma and send missionaries to India. So hopefully this little uh, audio, this little video cast has uh, given you some more information about Baptist life in America during the 19th century as Baptists organized for missions. Thanks a lot. See you next time.